In this video, we'll talk about joint discrete distributions. We'll talk about Cartesian products of sets, joint PMFs and expectation, marginal PMFs, independence, and variance as for independent random variables. So let A and B be sets. The Cartesian product of A and B is denoted A cross B, which is the set of all ordered pairs A, B, where A is in A and B is in B. So a small example, 1, 2, 3 times 4, 5 is a set of size 6 with 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 4, 2, 5, 3, 4, and 3, 5. So another example, um, the xy plane, 2d space, is denoted r squared, which is r cross r, which is just every pair of real numbers, x and y. If a and b are finite sets, then the size of a cross b is the size of a times the size of b by the product rule of counting. So now, suppose I roll two bare four-sided die independently. Let x be the value of the blue die and y the value of the red die. Specify the ranges and the joint range. So the range of each one is just 1 through 4. But the range of x and y is just the cross product, uh, the Cartesian product, which is the set of all ordered pairs. Now, let's specify the joint probability mass function. We denote it like pxy of x and y, which is the probability that x is x and y equals y. So for all of these, it's actually just going to be 1 16th because they're all equally likely and the die rolls are independent. We can write it like this. It's just 1 16th for all x and y in the joint range. So if x and y are discrete random variables, the joint PMF of x and y is this, as we said. The joint range is the uh, set of values c and d, where the probability of x equaling c and y equaling d is strictly greater than 0. So it's possible. And note that if we sum over the entire um, rectangle, then we get 1, with the sum of the probabilities. And finally, if g is a function, then the expected value of g of xy is the double sum of x and y of g of xy times the probability of that value. So now, let uh, u be the min of the two die rolls, and v be the max of the two die rolls. So it's possible that the min is anywhere from 1 to 4, and same for the max. But the joint range, uv, requires that u is always less than or equal to v, because the min has to be less than or equal to the max. And so this joint range is actually not equal to the product, because 4, 1 is not possible, for example. So let's specify the joint probability mass function, the probability that u is u and v is v. So First, everything on this lower diagonal is 0 because u uh, has to be less than or equal to v, and here 2 is not less than or equal to 1. Then the along the diagonals, we need the min and max to be 1. And the only way to ha have that happen is that if x and y are both equal to that value, so there's only one outcome out of the 16. And then finally, if we want, for example, u to be 1 and v equals 2, so the min is 1, the max is 2, well, there's two ways that can happen. Either we got 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. So there's two ways out of 16 to get all of the other values here. And these do sum to 1. And we can write it like this as well, in a messier way. Now, let's ask what the probability that the uh, min is actually equal to a particular value, like 1. So how would you get that from this table? Well, the probability that u equals 1, I would actually just sum up this entire row. And I would get 7 out of 16, because this is all the cases where u is equal to 1. If I wanted to find the probability that u is equal to 2, I would sum over this entire row here, the sum over all v's of the probability u is equal to 2 and v is equal to that value. So we get 5 16 then 3 16 and 1 16 And so this is um, called a marginal probability mass function. Um, if you have a joint probability mass function and you are only interested in one of the variables, um, what you can do to get the probability mass function of it is to sum the joint probability mass function across all values of the other variable. This is the law of total probability, um, and it's like summing the entire row. Same, same for y, you just sum over all values of x. And if z were also a discrete random variable, then if I wanted to find the marginal PMF of z, I would just use the law of total probability and sum over all possible values of x and y of the, the joint PMF. So now, independence. So we'll say discrete random variables x and y are independent if for every x in the range of x and y in the range of y, um, this is true, and we've seen this before. Uh, you can read all this on your own time. So if x and y are random variables, then the variance of x plus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y. So um, this property relies on the fact they're independent, whereas linearity of expectation always holds regardless of independence. And here's another property of variance that you can combine, and you know how to, you could derive this yourself using this property and the variance of ax plus b property. Um, and then you can try reading this proof yourself as well. And once you prove that lemma, then you can finally get to the real proof of the variance as. It's kind of messy, but I'm sure you can figure it out. 